Hey guys, welcome to Final Cut Pro Day. Why am I saying that? Because Apple just released Final Cut 10.7 along with a new motion and a new compressor. And we're super excited to show you how these new features work, including the new scrolling timeline, a new way to organize your timeline with roles and a bunch of other cool stuff that Mark's gonna show you. Yeah, I'm gonna show you how you can now organize your connected clips into these collapsible storylines that are very cool. And there's a brand new machine learning model for the object tracker. There's also several new features in Final Cut Pro for iPad, and we're gonna take you through all of them. Yeah, we're gonna look at all of it. We can't wait to get into it. Let's get started. Final Cut Pro 10.7 now has a scrolling timeline that keeps your clips moving under the playhead during playback so that your content is always right in front of you. During playback, once the playhead reaches the center of the timeline, the clips begin scrolling. What's especially great about how this works is that when zooming in or out, the thumbnails and the waveforms update in real time, which is critical in order to see upcoming sound cues in your dialogue, music, or effects. Also in typical Apple fashion, the way this feature is implemented is really elegant. For example, I can still manually scroll ahead in the timeline if I need to, then when the playhead returns to center, my clips resume auto-scrolling. Or if you move the playhead past the center point during playback, the playhead slowly migrates back to center. You can also tap the L key on your keyboard to shuttle forward. Each time you tap, the speed increases and the clips continue to auto-scroll until you stop playback by pressing the K key. If you want to turn timeline scrolling off, you can do so by pressing command comma to bring up the settings window, then unchecking this box in the playback section. Final Cut 10.7 also includes a way to collapse your clips into connected storylines. Before I get into why I find this feature so useful and necessary, let me step back for a moment and talk about why we connect clips in the first place. Here's an intro clip to one of my YouTube videos, and I want to cut away to a B-roll clip of the product I'm talking about. So the key feature of this housing is a liquid-filled membrane. I'll move the playhead where I want the clip to start, then press Q to connect my B-roll clip to the primary storyline. If the clip is too long or too short, I just trim it as necessary. For many of us, connected clips function as sort of a scratch pad, allowing us to quickly work out the timing and placement of our B-roll clips relative to the underlying video. However, if you're like me, at some point in the process, you'll want to place related clips into their own group, called a connected storyline. Prior to this update, when clips overlap, as they do here, they must first be trimmed before you can group them using the keyboard shortcut Command-G. Now what I just showed you took four steps. I'll undo that and show you the new and better way to do this. With the clip still selected, I'll right click and choose Collapse to Connected Storyline. Boom! Everything that previously took multiple steps to accomplish now takes one. If I reveal the audio by pressing Ctrl S, you'll see that the audio overlap has been preserved so that you can easily create audio feeds between each clip. That's a nice touch, Apple. The benefit of creating a connected storyline is that you can move related clips as a group and copy and paste them as a group. A secondary benefit is that your timeline gets tidied up. You can also combine connected clips and connected storylines into a unified connected storyline. I'll do that now by dragging out a selection to include all the content I want to combine. Before I collapse these clips into a connected storyline, I want to call your attention to these gaps in the timeline where no connected clips exist just in case you're wondering how this is handled when the clips are collapsed. I'll right-click on one of the individual clips and choose Collapse to Connected Storyline. The connected clips are trimmed where necessary, placed into a unified connected storyline, and wherever gaps occurred in the timeline prior to collapsing, gap clips are inserted to preserve the timing while maintaining the visibility of the underlying clip. Let's look at another scenario you may come across and how to deal with it. A bit later in the timeline, I have some overlapping connected clips that include a lower third title. I'll select all of these clips, including the title, then collapse them. As before, I get a nice, tidy, connected storyline, but with one issue. The title was collapsed along with the others, and its timing is correct, but because the title had visual priority in the stacking order prior to collapsing, it overwrote the second part of the Moray Eel clip in the group and now the title appears over an unrelated clip directly below it on the primary storyline. I'll undo that. 
This time, I'll select every connected clip and connected storyline, making sure to exclude the title, then collapse again. I now have all my clips unified into one group, and the title properly appears over the clip it's supposed to. Just something to be aware of when working. By the way, if you use this feature a lot, you can assign a custom keyboard shortcut to it. Audio rolls are a fundamental aspect of working with sound in the magnetic timeline, allowing you to fluidly organize your soundtracks using only metadata. In Final Cut Pro 10.7, Apple expands this feature even further so that you can add custom video rolls to clips that contain both video and audio. Here, I have opened a timeline where all my content is organized by audio rolls. I want to assign a custom role to these four dialog clips. Just so we're clear, any clip that contains both video and audio is automatically assigned a blue dialog role during import. I'll select them, right click and choose Assign Audio Roles, then choose one of the custom audio roles I created previously. All four clips inherit the new role color. What's important to understand about roles is that they are primarily designed for organizing your audio content, not your video. So the clip color will always reflect the audio roll color you assign whenever the clips are collapsed. If I expand the audio by pressing Ctrl S, you can now see that the video portion of the clip is still assigned the blue dialog roll. Previously, you could not assign a separate video roll because the audio roll would always take precedence. With this update, now you can. Let me show you a few ways I would use this feature. Let's say that I'm working on a video and I want to flag a group of clips for a future effect or edit operation. These clips were all shot at night underwater and I want to apply some noise reduction to them. Because of the processing involved, I prefer adding the noise reduction effect much later in the editing process and I want to apply a custom video role to remind me to do this. All the clips are assigned a teal effects role and because the clips are collapsed, that's the color that is visible in the timeline. I'll select all the clips that I want to roll tag, then right click on one of them and choose Assign Video Rolls, Edit Rolls. In the Video Roll section, I'll add a new video roll. I'll name it Add NR for noise reduction. Assign a custom roll color, then click Apply. To assign the roll, I'll right click again, choose Assign Video Rolls, then select the custom video roll I just created. The clips expand and I can see that the video portion of each clip now has a separate roll color. If I collapse the audio, the audio roll color will be shown. The other way to reveal the video roll color is to open the timeline index and show the audio lanes. If I select the video roll in the index, these clips become highlighted in the timeline, even when the lanes or the clips are collapsed. Another way you might use this feature is when handing off your timeline to another editor for effects work or color grading, and you want to make sure the editor knows what clips need to be adjusted. I'll select a discontiguous group of clips using the command key. Then assign a video role I've created labeled Color Correct. The video portion of the selected clips are now clearly called out in that role color, again, independently of the audio roles that are assigned. And here's one other way you might use video roles that I'll leave you with. Here, I have a multicam clip placed into a timeline. I'll open the multicam clip into the angle editor, then assign custom video roles to each angle. I'll return to the parent timeline to perform a quick multicam edit of the beginning of the ceremony. Now here's the cool part. If I open the timeline index and click the Show Audio Lanes button, I can see each angle cut I made represented visually by the very colored video rolls. Very cool indeed. The Object Tracker in Final Cut Pro for Mac lets you track text, graphics, and masked effects to your footage. In 10.7, Apple's updated the Object Tracker with a new machine learning model. You'll need an Apple Silicon Mac to take advantage of it. But if you have one, I think you'll be impressed with how much better it tracks objects that get occluded by other objects or that change scale by moving towards or away from the camera. For example, with this clip, let's say I'd like to hide the identity of the guide on the horse. Prior to 10.7, the fact that he passes behind multiple trees would make the shot very difficult to track in a single analysis and it would require deleting sections of the analysis. I'll add the Gaussian blur effect, add a shape mask, and hold down the Option key as I drag the mask over the subject. It changes shape when it recognizes the subject. Now, I'll select the tracker, and then in the inspector, 
I'll change the analysis method to machine learning and then analyze the clip. You can see how the tracker picks back up on our rider as he passes behind the trees. From here, you can offset the shape from the tracker and reposition and resize it as needed. To get the most out of the object tracker, check out our short form tutorial at rippletraining.com. If you're working on a Mac with an Apple M1 or M2 Max or Ultra chip, or the latest M3 Mac with a Pro or Ultra chip, you can export H.264 or HEVC files faster by simultaneously processing video segments across available media engines. In order to take advantage of this feature, you'll need to be running Mac OS Sonoma or later. Here's how it works. I have opened a completed wedding project and I'm ready to export an HEVC movie for uploading to Vimeo for client approval. From the file menu, I'll choose Share HEVC High Efficiency Video. Choose Settings, then set the codec to HEVC 10-bit to match the bit depth of my project. Notice here that you also have the option to export H.264 media as well. By default, Allow Export Segmentation is enabled for you, and you can turn it off if you wish, but I have to ask, why on earth would you want to? The only time you won't see it enabled is if you choose the HEVC 10-bit Dolby Vision option. The next step is to name and save your movie. During export, you'll see the movie segments appear in the location you specified when you save the movie. Once the process is complete, Final Cut Pro will merge these segments into a single movie. If you open the Background Tasks window, you'll also see confirmation of segmented rendering in progress. I'm running Final Cut Pro on a laptop with an M1 Max chip, and I'm seeing a speed increase of 5 to 10 percent compared to exporting the same movie with segmentation turned off. So, at least on my lowly M1 Max, the feature is, well, let's just say that it didn't exactly meet my expectations, and I'll leave it at that. I had no way of testing this on an M2 or M3 chip, and I'd be curious to hear your own experience with render times. Also, during my tests, the feature seemed to work the most efficiently on long-form content. I saw little or no difference in export speed when outputting a 10-minute or less movie for YouTube. Along with the 10.7 update for Final Cut Pro for Mac, Final Cut Pro for iPad has been updated with several new features. First, you can now record voiceover directly into Final Cut Pro for iPad using either the built-in or a connected external microphone. With the playhead position where you want the voiceover to start, simply tap the microphone icon in the toolbar. Or if you have a connected keyboard, you can use the keyboard shortcut Shift-V. In the voiceover controls that appear, tap the three dots to select an input, adjust the gain, double tap the slider to reset it, show or hide the audio meters, enable or disable a countdown, mute timeline audio, and add a pre-record buffer to create some extra handle for trimming. Tap outside the settings window to close it, then tap the record button. I don't remember the last time I got to celebrate Lunar New Year in the Bay, but I'm glad I'm finally home. You can now group together connected clips into a connected storyline for easy repositioning, editing, and adding transitions. If you've been using Final Cut Pro on the Mac, you'll be very familiar with the benefits of connected storylines. To create one, tap drag over the clips you want to include, tap and hold on one of them, and select Group. Or if you have a connected keyboard, you can use the shortcut Command-G. Gap clips get added for any gaps between your clips. You can now move all the clips in the connected storyline as a single unit, swap the clip order, delete clips, and trim clips as if they were on the primary storyline. To add another clip or clips to a connected storyline, perform the same tap and drag action to select both the connected storyline and the other clip or clips, tap hold, and tap group. To break apart a connected storyline, Tap and hold on the outline of the storyline and tap Ungroup, or use the keyboard shortcut Shift Command G. 
In the Effects Browser, for both Final Cut Pro for iPad and Mac, you'll find 12 new color grading presets, which you can preview on the iPad by tapping each one. And since they're presets, they're fully adjustable in the inspector. In addition, in the Titles browser, in the Essential Titles category, there's a new Slate title to add to the start of a project, and a new Timecode watermarking title, good for adding over a full work-in-progress edit. And finally, in Generators, you'll find a new Essential Countdown that can also be added to the start of a project and easily modified. So let us know what you think. Leave a comment. We're always interested in knowing what you think. And please subscribe if you like our content. And we'll see you next time.